these problems are my absolute favorite kinds of problems in this section. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what we're given for each of the angles, and we want to build um, <laughs> we want to build our triangles the way we've done this in the past. So we're going to first uh, figure out what is the sine of alpha plus beta. Well, the sine of alpha plus beta is not the sine of alpha plus the sine of beta. So you really need to be paying attention to this. We have to use the addition formula. That's what we call that. Sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. Well, we're already given a couple of these. We're, well, we're actually just given one. We're given the sine of beta equals negative one-half. So we'll put a negative one-half in there when we get there, but we need the sine of alpha, we need the cosine of beta, and we need the cosine of alpha. So, well, how do we do that? Well, uh, over here, where should we draw these triangles? Notice that alpha is in the third quadrant between pi and 3 pi over 2, and beta is also in the third quadrant between pi and 3 pi over 2. So we could draw just one scenario here in the third quadrant, but I don't want to do that. I want to draw them both different separately so we can see them separately. We're going to put alpha over here in the third quadrant, and the tangent of alpha is 5 over 12. Remember, the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, and the opposite leg would be 5, and the adjacent leg would be 12. If we think of these numbers as coordinates, it's super helpful to then not miss a minus sign. So building our triangle, we hopefully by now remember that the 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. So now we can, uh, having this picture here really helps us to get what the what values we need and put them in this expression. And then our beta, again, also in the third quadrant, sine of beta being the opposite over hypotenuse. Now the opposite leg over hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is always going to, going to be a positive number. And again, thinking about the uh, these legs, the lengths of the legs as negative numbers representing the coordinates of that point right there. All we have to do is figure out, well, sine equals negative one-half. We know that's one of the key values, but if you uh, if you solve for this side, you're going to get negative rad 3. And so beta is going to be there. Again, if you did, didn't did recognize that that was one of those key values, which I just finally recognized, you'd get c squared equals a squared plus b squared and 4 equals 1 plus a squared a squared equals 4 minus 1 and so a equals rad 3 and if we put rad 3 there because uh, we, we make it negative because we want to represent this point uh, the coordinates of this point in terms of the sides. So we know that the side length can't be negative, but uh, we leave it there so we don't make a mistake on the negatives. So now we're ready to start filling in the, the, the values for each of these trig functions. The sine of alpha. The sine of alpha, this is where you really have to pay attention. The sine of alpha is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, and alpha is in the third quadrant, so the opposite leg is negative 5, hypotenuse being 13. Cosine of beta. Cosine of beta is negative rad 3 over 2. Negative rad 3 over 2. And then plus the cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 12 over 13, times the sine of beta. And we were given that, or we could just look over here again, opposite over hypotenuse. Now, simplifying this expression, we have negative times a negative, that's a positive, 5 times radical 3 over 13 times 2 is 26, and then plus minus times minus, so it's plus 12 times 1 is 12. Don't cancel the 2 and the 12 because we want a common denominator of 26. And when we combine both terms, we get 5 radical 3 plus 12 all over 
26. It's kind of fun problems that um, put a lot of the different concepts that we've been learning all together into one problem. So that's how you do number 36. It is exactly how you do number 38 also. Noticing that for problems 33 through 38, it says find the exact value of each of the following under the given conditions. So th these are the conditions. Okay, these are the conditions. And you're finding the exact value of each of the following. So A, B, C, and D. You really only need to do a couple of these problems to really get the idea of what's going on and to practice the, um, the formulas. So we, I am not going to do the rest of them, but you could. I will uh, do D for number 38. So we can see how it works when we, uh, when we evaluate or find the exact value of a tangent addition or in this case subtraction formula.